Father, we praise you and we thank you, God, for another opportunity to do this. Lord, to put your word out. Lord, we thank you for all that you're doing in the prisons and jails all over this nation. We praise you for the truth in your word that, that anyone can count on it and stand on it. Lord, you're not a man that you should lie, but what you have said you will back up. And I thank you and I praise you for it in Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen. I'm going to uh, start out today. This is week 35. And this in him scripture study will go on for, for six more weeks after tonight. And we'll probably start on a uh, study in Romans. But I, I started out, I've I done this in a, a jail, local jail here yesterday and I kind of explained to them how this all come about and I've said this before but but it probably merits saying it again because a lot of people don't realize it the the ministry name is prodigal son ministries and there's a reason for that I I spent a lot of years on uh, out in the world because I didn't, didn't know what God's word said I was as a born-again Christian. I was, I was saved when I was in my early 20s and called to preach not long after that. But I struggled. I'm talking about struggled for years. Uh, probably about eight years, i just done everything I knew to do and still just fell flat on my face over and over and over again. Nobody knew it but me. You know, I, I didn't, didn't feel like I ever measured up. And today I know why. It's all because I never found out, never took God's word for what it is, and it's the truth. And we can count on it. And what he has said about us, we can, we can stand on that. And that's, that's the sole reason we do what we do is because not only is the jails and the prisons full, and these videos, they go out into the, to the jails and prisons. We're approved in about 900 right now, 919 to be exact. But uh, the world needs to know this. And this is a Facebook Live but this audio will be used on the podcast on on a Sunday message, and we I mean we we do this because people need to understand where they stand with God, because religion is very good at telling us uh, we're not good enough, we'll never measure up, and God's word says completely different to that, and that's the reason I am so adamant on making sure that that the world understands what we're doing this for and and they understand that God's word is true for them just like it is for everybody else. So, let's get into this. Honey, did you push disc 1? Okay. <laughs> we're we we're, we're a man down tonight, so uh we're just making making do with what we got. We're going to start out with Philippians the second chapter in the 13th verse. And just like I said, for years, I thought I was on my own. I, I'd done all that I needed to do. Just, I'm, I'm talking about, I'm a very diligent person. If I do something, I'm going to do it to the best of my ability. And, and if I, if I want to do it, and, and this is something that I, I've wanted to do my entire life. I was called to do it, but, but, for the first eight years of my ministry, it was just a, you know, I struggled. Nobody knew it. They didn't see the, see the struggle that, that I had. And I finally just threw up my hands and quit because I couldn't measure up. But I didn't know what I know that today. I didn't know that, that all I had to do was run to God. I didn't know that, <laughs> that God wasn't some bipolar old man with a, hammer in one hand, a lightning bolt in the other, just waiting for somebody to screw up. I didn't know that he was a whole lot easier to please than people. I, I'm going to tell you something. 
That one, that one statement that God's a whole lot easier to please than people will take you a lot of places in this world that you never would have went. And, but when you realize that, that God is there for you and you can please him. If you're born again, he, Jesus Christ took everything, the, every mistake that you've ever made or ever will make upon himself. And God don't look at you as a born-again child of God as you are in the flesh. He looks at you through Christ's blood. And you need to understand that not only it is, are you born again and the blood has been applied to your life, but you've got to understand that God is in you. God's Spirit is in you. And that's what this scripture is all about. It says, For it is God which worketh in you, both to will and to do his good pleasure. What's the New Living Translation? He said, for God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. See, I struggled with that. I mean, I really did. I thought I was out here on my own, doing all that I could do, never measuring up. See, the law, what the law is, is, was meant to do was to, to show us that our need of a Savior because man will never measure up to the law. But Jesus came to die to, to fulfill that law. He not only fulfilled that law, but the Bible says he was made to be sin for us so that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. In other words, Christ fulfilled the law. And then God made him to be our sin. And he was punished for that sin. He died on the cross for what we have done. And I'm, I'm going to say this. He also took stripes on Calvary's cross for our healing. And, and a lot of people don't realize that. I, I, told, I said this in the jail the other day. And, and it's so true. The church, the church, and I'm talking about the church as a whole, worldwide, has done a very good job in making sure people knew how to get born again. To, to, to get people born again. But the church as a whole uh, has done a very poor job of teaching people who they are in that salvation. Who they are in Christ Jesus, their Lord and Savior. Because the most important thing you'll ever do in this world is to be born again. That's the, that's the most important decision you'll ever make in your lifetime. But yet, nobody realizes and nobody that I can see that is teaching it the way we're teaching it because the second most important thing in, the, in, this, in this Christian life, first, of all, first and foremost, is being born again. Second of all is knowing who you are in that salvation, who you are in Christ Jesus, and where you stand in the whole, the whole plan. See, the, you, you really don't realize it, but we as born-again Christians are the church, and we are the body. Christ is the head, but we're the body. We're the ones that, that go to work out here and get out here in the world and, and reach out to the world. And it, it's amazing how that, how that uh, most people don't know. Are you listening to this? Does it sound all right on Facebook? Yeah, like I say, we're a man down, and they've been doing some uh, uh, changes to the sound, so we're just making sure we've got everything going the right way. Uh, what's the Amplified Classic for Philippians 2.13? It says, not in your own strength. For it, is, for it is God who is all the while effectually at work in you, energizing and creating in you the power and desire both to will and to work for his good pleasure and satisfaction and delight. I, I can't emphasize this enough, that when you're born again, God's Spirit comes and takes up his abode in us. Romans 5 and 5 says the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit, by the Holy Ghost. Well, 
you say, well, how do I receive the Holy Spirit? You receive the Holy Spirit. God's Spirit comes and takes up his abode in you when you are when you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And like this is week 35. There's there go back to this. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna say this. I've said this for two years now. We're we're over two years in and on the podcast. June 21st of 2021, we started this in him scripture study on the podcast, and we went scripture by scripture. What we're doing tonight took me a week to do. One scripture, I would do about a 22, 23-minute podcast on this one scripture and for five days a week, Monday through Friday. But now that we're doing this for these videos, we need more than just a 20-minute spot, so we're trying to, you know, we're putting five scriptures in this in these uh these prison videos that are going out. But when I come to realize what what this was all about, and when I started it and saw it, saw what it was doing in the in the jail, because I when I started it on the podcast, I started in the jail that, that I was going to four and five days a week. And I saw I saw with my own eyes what the word was doing. For, for some of the inmates, not all of them, but the ones that wanted to hear, wanted to learn, wanted to understand. I've got a, a guy right now that, that he got transported to prison today, this morning. And uh, it, it, it's amazing what he's carrying with him. He's been, this will be his third facility since I met him in, in May just I'm talking about a couple of weeks before we started that in him scripture study. I met him in a local jail here, and he's been incarcerated ever since. But it's amazing what the Word of God, not what me, not what Prodigal Son Ministries, but what the Word, what we have given him in the last two years, what it has developed in his life to be. And he's going in, and there's not a doubt in my mind, I told Missy, a while ago, that, you know, he's getting transferred to a prison. And she said, well, I know what he'll do. He'll go start a, a Bible study there. And, and he's done it. And, and he, he started one where he was at. He started one, the one they'd moved him to. And I know what he'll do there because he's got a hold of, of what he is, who he is in Christ. And, and it, it thrills me to be a part of that. And that's the reason we, we want you to, if you're watching these videos in a jail or a prison somewhere, take this study. And as far as I know, they're all going on there. Hopefully you can get to all of them because this is week 35. If you can go back and, and study these things, go back and go through them. When you get out, you're, you know, at the first of these videos, there, there's a... a uh, a picture of a globe, and it's got a website. Tell your families. Give them that website and tell them to go to that website. This podcast is free. This ministry is free. And we want you to see and understand what God wants you to know because I lived the biggest part of my adult life not understanding that it was God that, worked, that was doing the work in me to give me what I needed to succeed in life. To live my Christian life. I didn't realize that. And, and when I started realizing, I started to understand, started understanding what God wanted me to do in the, in the you know, 30 years ago when I, well, when I first gave my heart and life to Him. So we're going to go to uh, Colossians, the first chapter, and the 13th verse. It says, Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness? And has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. This is the, the King James. Let's look at the New Living Translation. It says, for he has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness. What does the darkness represent in this world? It represents evil. It represents the devil. It represents everything that's all about him. What is light? God is light. If you want to illuminate the darkness in your, wor in your world... 
put God's word into your heart and see what God's word will do for you. It says, and transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son. Well, how did he do that? Through salvation, through being born again. Let's read the uh, New Living Translation. It says, the Father has delivered and drawn us to himself out of the control and dominion of darkness and has transfer, transferred us into the kingdom of the Son of his love. Jesus done that. He, he can you go back to the King James on that one? Who has delivered us. He has delivered us and rescued us from the power of darkness. See, I told you I struggled. And I did for, for a lot of years. I struggled with the temptation. You know, the Bible says that, that you'll not be, that there'll not be any temptation come against you that God won't give you, that's not common to man, that God won't give you a, a way of escape. He'll not tempt you with anything that, that is over, without you being, over, being able to overcome it. And the key to overcoming anything is knowing who you are in Christ Jesus. Forgetting about what, this, what the mistakes this flesh has made. Forgetting about what's behind you. And I say this all the time in jails and prison. Forgetting about what the, the judge knows. Because the judge will, uh, when, you, when you go before a judge, they've got facts of, of all the things that you've been charged with. He knows it all as far as the, the paperwork's concerned. But if God has forgiven you, God's forgot about it. You may have to deal with those, those uh, charges. You may have to, to spend some time in jail or prison. But the fact of the matter is, if God has forgiven you, he's forgot about it. And I, don't, I want you to understand something. You don't have to live in shame and condemnation for the rest of your days. I'm going to say this. When you get out of prison, when you have paid your debt to society, don't ever let anybody tell you that you're just a convict and you won't, you won't ever help be anything else other than that. Because that's what the devil wants you to do. He wants you to think that you'll never be anything other than what you've done in your past because that's a lie. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5.17. Can you put that up? 2 Corinthians 5.17 said. Uh, I'll just let her put it up. And, so I can read it. It says therefore if any man. If any person. Therefore if any person be in Christ. He is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. It, it says, therefore, if any man be in Christ. It didn't say if a good man be in Christ. It says if any man. Now, I can go through this Bible, and I can show you time after time after time of people that were just mistakes waiting to happen. I mean, you may give you a good example of one. We're, we're talking about uh, being being delivered from from darkness, but I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a very good example of someone that that fell to a, a dark spot in their life, and that was David. David really messed up, but I, I used this illustration uh, yesterday in the jail. I said uh, talking about you may tell you how God can can use a mistake. You know, David, David committed adultery. He was, he made, made a, a man die. He, I mean, he was a murderer. He put a man in a position where he died so he could take his, take his wife because she was pregnant. But yet, through all that, a man died. David was quick to repent and 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 run to God. He didn't run from him. He ran to him, and God loved him and, and used him after that. But I told him, I said, "You me to tell you me give you a good example of what God can do with a situation like that after the fact." And they they just looking at me like, "Yeah, tell me what it is." I said, "It's King Solomon." 
Uh, and a lot of them didn't know it. I said, Who's, who was uh, King Solomon's mom? They didn't know. I said, it was Bathsheba. I said, you've got to understand something. I, I told them, I asked them, I said, do, I said, do you realize that, do you know who Rahab is? Rahab was a harlot, yet she's in the, in the lineage of Christ. Now, that's a, that's a statement. I'm talking about some dark places in this world, but yet end up in direct line to royalty, to our Savior. So, what are, you say, well, what are you saying? He can rescue us. He can pull us out. Even though we're, we're dealing with things, dealing with some dark places in this world, what's the King James say? It says, who has delivered us from the power of darkness or the power of the devil and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. God done that through Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Now, the 26th verse of uh, Colossians 1. Colossians 1, 26 is even the mystery which has been hid for eight, from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints. The 27th verse says, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Now let's read the, the New Living. It says, this, me this message was kept secret for centuries and generations past, but now it has been revealed to God's people. For God wanted them to know what the riches and the glory of Christ are for you Gentiles too. And this is the secret. Christ lives in you. This gives you assurance of sharing his glory. Boy, that's rich. Let's read the Amplified Classic. This is the mystery of which was hidden for ages and generations from angels and men that is now revealed to his holy people, the saints. It's to, to whom God was pleased to make known how great for the Gentiles how great for the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ within and among you, the hope of realizing the glory. Christ in you, the hope of glory. That was, that was a, a mystery, but it was made known to us. Now, when you come to understand that if you're a born-again child of God, you are part of a royal family. And I, I said this last week, I think, but I, I, I called the lady that printed the T-shirt that I've got on now and told her I wanted some, some gray ones with black lettering that said, uh, a good lawyer knows the law, but a great lawyer knows the judge. I, I, wore, I bought a T-shirt like that years and years ago, still got it. But I didn't, I didn't buy it. In the shape that I'm in now, I bought it in one of the darkest spots of my life. But today, I can wear that T-shirt and, and really, really be able to minister to people because that T-shirt means a whole lot more now than it did then. Because, you know, a, a good lawyer, anybody can, can uh, sit down and read a book and, 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 and go through things and, and know the law. But a great lawyer knows the judge. I've said this over and over, and I want you to understand this. There, you may be in a dark spot. You may, you may be having to deal with a whole lot of stuff. But the Christ in you, God's Spirit in you, the same Spirit, the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in God's born-again children. And I've said this over and over to the, I don't know how many thousands of inmates that have cycled through this local jail over here for the last five years. But this game is fixed if you'll play it. And they, they some of them, most of them just look at me like, what are you talking about? I'm talking about a game being fixed. I said a good lawyer knows the law, but a great one knows the judge. I'm talking about the, our, our, our uh, propitiation. Our, 
uh, the one that sits at the right hand of the Father. See, the, our Heavenly Father is the judge. This game is fixed if we'll play it. Our Heavenly Father is the judge, and our Savior is our, our undefeatable defense attorney. He sits at the right hand of the Father making intercession for us. And God's Spirit dwells in us. We're part of a undefeatable family. But yet most, now get this, most don't look at it that way. Like I said, the, the, the church as a whole has done a very poor job in teaching the born-again children of God in this world who they, who they are in Christ. And most people struggle. I asked them, I asked them this week. I said, I said, how many in here struggles? And most everybody raises their, raised their hands, including me. I said, look, we all fall short. We all struggle with things that, that, that should be easy for us. But it takes a lot of uh, self-examination. Self uh, renewing your mind over and over and over again. I told him, I said, look, this, this study, this is week 35. But I want to encourage you to go back and go through this entire study with us. If you're, not, if you're not incarcerated and you can get on our podcast, go all the way back to June 21st of 2021 and go all the way through that in him scripture study. Then go through, pro, or they'll, they'll go through that study in Romans, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians. We're just about to come out of 2 Corinthians and go into Galatians. I'm going to tell you something. Paul's epistles are, are, was written to strengthen the church, to show the Gentiles where they stood, and to show us how we can walk through this life unscathed. The devil wants more than anything to just beat our brains out. Don't let him. Don't let him. Put him in his place. That darkness we're talking about, that's him. Look here, you've been translated into the kingdom of God's dear son, into the kingdom of God through Christ's blood. Know who you are. Stand in who you are and believe it. Because I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you something. The devil ain't going to help you understand who you are. But he sure does. I'm going to say this. When you start finding out who you are, you can overcome anything that he, can throw, that he throws at you. I've said this over and over. When you find out who you are in Christ Jesus, there's nothing in this world that you can't overcome or do in him, in Christ Jesus. I heard, I heard a minister say this one time. I was in Newark, Newark, Texas at a minister's conference. He stood up, got a lot of respect for him, but he threw me a, a curve that, that day, that morning. He, said, he stood up before about 2,500 preachers and said you can have Anything you can believe for. And I'm like, what? You can have anything you can believe for? And then the Holy Spirit just brought it to me. He, he said, listen. He said, all things are possible to him that believes. Jesus said that. God's Spirit told me that because that scripture was in me. And I knew it was in, in me. I knew who get, brought it to me. Helped me understand what really threw me a curve when he said that. Because, you know, that's a big statement. But it's so true. Let's go on to, uh, was we, we're in the Amplified Classic Version. Did we do the Amplified Classic Version of 26 and 27? Uh, let's go to uh, Titus 2.14. It says, who gave himself for us. Now, see, we, we're talking about defeating the devil. We, we've talked about God's in us, and, and we've... Uh, we've we, we, through, through the entire 35 weeks we've been doing this, we, we're pointing in one direction. That is teaching you where you stand in, in God's, uh, God's kingdom, where you stand in the whole scheme of things when it comes to life. But listen to this. This is, this is how we got into God's kingdom. It says, who gave himself for us that we might re he might redeem us from all iniquity 
and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. Now, this, this is something that I had to really, I had to really stop and tell them, said, listen, our good works are not the root of our salvation. Jesus is the root of our salvation. It says, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. In other words, they want to do good works. But those works are not the root of our salvation. They're the fruit of our salvation. Jesus is the root of it. And, and he has put in us through his Holy Spirit the desire to do good things in this world. Look, read the New Living Translation. It says, he gave us his life to free us from every kind of sin, to cleanse us, to make us his very own people, totally committed to doing good deeds. You say, boy, I'm set in jail somewhere. I'm, I'm in prison. And you're saying, I'm committed to doing good things, doing good deeds. Listen to me. We all make mistakes. That's the sad part about religion. We've all heard Romans 3, 23 all of our life. We all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I know, I know and understand that. Honey, can you put that up? We've all heard that over and over and over again. It makes me mad sometimes when I hear people say that because they don't ever read the next verse right after it. We've all messed up. We've, I've heard it over and over. I'm just an old sinner saved by grace. No, you're either a, a, a born-again child of God or you need to get saved. I may uh, do what? Oh. You just made me forget. <laughs> uh, Romans three twenty three. Uh, you know we all we all mess up. We all we all mess up. Now I'm not, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you you're gonna mess up from now on. But the fact of the matter is Jesus died, took all your iniquity on Himself. It says. Now, this is Romans 3, 23. I've heard this all my life. It says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Next verse. Being justified freely by God's grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Now, let's go back to Titus uh, 2, 14. The New Living Translation. It says, he gave his life to free us from every kind of sin to cleanse us, and to make us his very own people. Now go back to the King James Version. He says, Who gave himself for us that, we might may, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. Now go to the Amplified Classic. It says, Who gave himself for on our behalf that he might redeem us Purchase our freedom from all iniquity and purify for himself people to be peculiarly his own, people who are eager and enthusiastic about living a life that is good and filled with beneficial deeds. You say, boy, I, I don't know. Yeah, that's, that sounds good, but, but, uh, but I'm in prison. Really? I understand that. We've all sinned and come short of glory, glory of God. But Stacy Hayes being justified freely by God's grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, my Lord and Savior, is what I'm going to stand on. And that's what I want you to understand and stand on. See, this, this, uh, this uh, card, and by the way, ladies, if, if you hadn't got your card yet, we hadn't, I don't think we've mailed that card out. Uh, but... We, have, we called, and you can't get this physical card. We've got to mail you a copy of it, and it's got to come in on your tablets. We had two, two people, two women, ask for these cards, and I want to encourage you. If you want one of these cards, let me know. You may not get the physical card, but we can mail a copy of it, 
and and if you're in the same facilities that these ladies are, they can uh, upload it to your tablet. But if you'll take this scripture card and and use it for what it's worth, take this and 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 renew your mind to it. And the first the first scripture on this card is Romans three twenty four. Being justified freely by God's grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. See, when, when I read Romans 3, 24, I put my name on the front of it. Stacy Hayes being justified freely by God's grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, my Lord and Savior. See, I put my name in it. I make myself, I, I connect myself with that scripture. And you can do every one of these that way with your name. And... I want, that's what this card's all about. I told them at the, at the prison, the jail the other day, I said, uh, when I first started giving these cards out, I gave them, I gave a bunch of them out one week and went through the whole jail and gave them out and then come back the next week and there's a guy sitting, I probably told this before, but he was sitting with his back to the wall in one of the pods and he was scratching off the last verse. And he, he was, I mean, he was very pleased with himself. I walked through the door and he handed it to me. He said, I'm done. Just grinning from ear to ear. And I said, keep that. I said, I said, uh, and I give him another one because he, he had marked that one up. I said, I give him a clean one. I said, keep that. I said, do it again. And you've never seen a grown man look so disappointed. But he looked at me like, do it again. I've looked at all these scriptures. And, and as the guy told me yesterday that there's 88 scriptures on each side of this card. I couldn't tell you how many is on there. I've done every one of them. But uh, I've had people count them. And I've tried to count them. But I always second guess myself on the count. So I was told that there's 88 scriptures on each side. But he said, do it again. I said, yeah. I said, don't you know we leak? And he kind of looks at me and said, what? I said, we forget. We forget who we are. What did Peter do? Peter walked on the water. You can't take that from him. You cannot take the fact that Peter walked on the water. And, and, and <laughs> you can't, you can't uh, un, unremember the fact that he cut a man's ear off and denied Christ. But yet, what happened when he walked on the water? He's, he's, I mean, he done the impossible. But yet when he took his eyes off Christ and began to look around at all the junk that was going on around him, all the wind and the waves, and he knew this wasn't supposed to be happening, he began to sink. See, when we forget what the Word says about us, what happens? We stagger, we stumble. And we begin to sink. We forget. Our faith may start waning, start lessening. But I want you to understand something. That's what these tablets are for. I told a, a guy here a while back, I said, it's coming to a place that a preacher is not going to get to go in, be able to go in to uh, these correctional facilities because they're so understaffed. I, I would bet any amount of money you want to bet right now that, that all these government agencies are trying to figure out how to do, how to run these correctional facilities with less people. I see it's coming to the place where one of these tablets are the only way that we're going to be able to preach and, and, and help people in these jails and prisons. I know it. I had no idea what God wanted me to do this podcast four years ago, but today I know exactly what, what I'm, I'm supposed to be doing because this is the only uh, direct line. I mean, it's a direct line to millions, to millions. And, and they need it. We all need it, but I'm, I guess I'm always been for the, uh, for the underdog. A man that's locked up, can't see his family, can't see, can't, you know, can't use the phone a lot of times. You know, it, that's rough. And if I can give him, give him or her something to help her, help, help them to be strong, not in themselves, but in Him, in what Christ has done, that that I've done my job, because this this will strengthen you 
farther than any, I'm talking about any exercise program has ever done. God's word will lift you up. It will lift you up and, and make you into who you are, if you'll believe it, if you'll stand in it. Did we get that Amplified Classic of that, Titus? Go to Titus 3 and 7. Now, this is how we can have confidence that, that God's with us. He's, he'll always, he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'll go with you always, into, even to the end of the world. And I want to read something. I think it's Malachi. I want to make sure before I tell her to put it up. But it's Malachi 3 and 6, I think, honey. She may beat me to it now since I told her. Malachi 3 and 6. It says, For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore you sons of Jacob are not consumed. God is, he hadn't changed. What he done for David, what he done all through the, the Bible for Paul and Peter and James and John, he'll do for you. He'll lift you up, he'll help you, and he'll strengthen you. God is no respecter of person. And I want you to understand, now put Titus 3 and 7. I want you to understand what these scriptures, how we can look at all these four scriptures we've just dealt with and come to understand how that we can come boldly to God's throne and, and feel like that, that we're supposed to, we can because I never understood how to come boldly to God's throne. I always felt like I had to come on all fours with a puddle of tears under my head. God's not a tyrant. God loves you. He loves me. He loves everybody on this planet. And he wants us to know it. Titus 3 and 7 says that being justified by his grace. What is grace? God's unmerited favor. We should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Now, what is hope? I, 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 I emphasized this yesterday, but I want you to understand something. For, uh, have, have you ever heard, oh, I'm just hoping and praying? That's not biblical hope. That's wishing. That's hoping everything works out all right. No, that ain't, that ain't, uh, that's not biblical hope. Biblical hope is a confident expectation. That is biblical hope. I say it, it's, it's, it's faith. Knowing, knowing what, what God's word says and standing on it. Knowing that, that Malachi 3 and 6 says, For I am the Lord and I change not. If he spoke it, you can stand on it. What's the, the New Living Translation for uh, Titus 3 and 7. It says, because of his grace, he declared us righteous and gave us confidence that we will inherit eternal life. See, that confidence comes from knowing, knowing without a shadow of a doubt that what he has said to us, for us, and about us in his word is for us and, and we can count on it. I'm going to tell you something. God didn't lie. When he wrote this book, he will not back up from this book. And if, if he has said something, you can count in it, on it for yourself, no matter how you feel about yourself. Because I'm going to tell you something. The devil will work on you 24-7. Don't let him, don't put him in his place. Look at the, the Amplified Classic. And I'm going to change gears. It says, and he did, in, uh, did it in order that we might be justified by God's grace, God's unmerited favor, by his favor, wholly undeserved, that we might be acknowledged and counted as, as conformed to the divine will in purpose, thought, and action, that we might become heirs of eternal life according to our hope. And to, according to our confident expectation of what God has said will come to pass. Now, I'm, I do this every time I do a podcast, every time I do a video, every time I go into a jail or a prison somewhere. 
I give people an opportunity to be born again. Romans 10 and 9 says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, it says you shall be saved. It don't say you might be if you're good enough. It says there, let me back up, back up, honey, one, just a minute. It says, if thou, if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. That's all it takes to be born again. It didn't say you had to run 300 miles backwards and feel like you've done everything right to come to God and say, Lord, save me, forgive me, be Lord of my life. It says if you'll confess Jesus as the Lord of your life by faith and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you are saved. And don't let anybody tell you any different. If you've never been born again, do that. It's easy. Religion makes salvation hard. Religion makes salvation almost impossible when you factor in all the, did you do it right? Did you cross all your T's and dot all your I's? And, and, and did you do it at the right moment? Because they've made God into some unpleasable tyrant that's got to have everything perfect. No, Jesus Christ died so that we could come to him. He, Jesus Christ died a perfect sacrifice so we could come to him in our broken, broken life, with our broken lives, and him restore us. Romans 10 and 10, it says, For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. See, our mouth's got a whole lot to do with our Christian life. Confess Jesus as Lord. Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, and you shall be saved. It says, for with the heart man believes, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Now, okay, honey, you can pull it off of this one, but I want to say something today. I want you to look up uh, Proverbs, the third chapter, and I'm going to leave this with you, I'm, or Proverbs 13, rather. 13 and 3, because there's an inmate asked me about this. She's, see, she's, she's a whole lot quicker at this than I am, because uh, this is something that really means something. It says, he that keepeth his mouth keeps his life, and he that openeth wide his lips shall have destruction. See, what did I say? With the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Your mouth has a lot to do with your Christian life. Read this verse and study it. And, and if you've got a study Bible, dig into it. Because I didn't realize how important what I said was, it was to what, how my success in life. But when I come to understand that Jesus Christ justified me, being justified freely, Stacy Hayes was justified freely by God's grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. See, that says he that keeps his mouth, he that controls what he says. To determine in your heart, if, if you're born again, determine in your heart you ain't going to say nothing but what God's word says about you. See, that's a, he that controls his tongue will have a long life. <laughs> did, did you change that? Those are, yeah, the New Living Translation. Let's see, I've got a, a, a good wife. Those who control their tongue will have a long life. Opening your mouth can ruin everything. Okay, boy, if that ain't the truth. Uh, if that ain't the truth. I, I told them the other day. The Lord led me years ago to, I don't know how many months, it was over six months, it was maybe probably closer to a year. I read the whole book of Proverbs every week. I read five scriptures on Monday through Friday, that's 25, and on the sixth day, I read six script, or six books, rather. There's 31 books in the book of, uh, in the book, uh, in the book of Proverbs, 31 chapters. 
I'll get it right in a minute. But I done that for months. Every week I'd read the whole book of Proverbs. And at the end of it, I, what, I, what I found out, I asked them, and one of the guys said he told me a couple of things that were, were uh, prominent in the, in, in the book of Proverbs. And I said, yeah, you're right. And it was, he, he spoke up and says, keep your eyes off the women. Don't pay no attention to them. Don't get in trouble with women. And he said, and keep your mouth shut. I said, well, I've never had a problem with the first one. But my big mouth, I, that's what I learned, to keep my big mouth shut because I was talking about just, just anything and everything. Now, I'm not talking about bad junk. I'm just talking about gatoring. Just my, my gums bumping all the time about nothing. And your words will either justify you or condemn you. And that is so important. Our speech is so important. Speak good things over yourself. If you're born again, start speaking what these scriptures say about you over you. If you're not born again, make him Lord and Savior of your life today. And, and you want to, and now after you do that, find out what all these scriptures have said about you and, and, and stand in that. Believe that and understand that. Understand that. God wants you to know without a shadow of a doubt that He is on your side. He is on your side. So tonight, if you've never been born again, make Jesus Lord. And if you have been born again, Make sure that you, may, that you find out who Christ has made you to be in your salvation, in Christ Jesus, your Lord and Savior. Father, I praise you and I thank you, God, for the time that you've given us. Lord, I praise you for your word and all that you have said and done in your word to us, for us, and about us, and that we can count on that. Lord, I pray whoever watches these videos will, will find some strength, not in what I've done, but what you have said in your word through these videos to help them see and understand that there is strength in you, in your truths, that you don't lie, you're going to back up everything that you've ever said to, to us, each and every one of us. You're no respecter of person, and you love us. Lord, I praise you, and I thank you for all you're doing. All you have done and all you're going to do. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen.